What if I told you that this device here, this tiny piece of metal with no moving parts, could produce an air current silently, and it's a strong enough current to cool a laptop? You would think it was impossible, right? You'd be like, this, it doesn't exist. There's no way. Okay, let me do a quick demonstration. So this technology is inside this little box here. It's right in this section here. I'm gonna lay down some smoke and you will see. It's crazy and it's silent, like no sound. And the best part about this whole technology, I saw a fully functional laptop with this inside it. It was running off of this cooling technology. And this device was built by a very big company, very well-known company. They're gonna be showcasing at CES in a couple weeks. So this technology comes from a company called Ventiva. They've made a solid state cooler that is unlike anything I've seen before. But to appreciate what's really going on here, we gotta go back in time a little bit. Two years ago, there was a product that made headlines. It was a product from a company called Froar, and they made something called the Airjet. And I chose not to cover their tech. Let me explain why. The Airjet used a technology that was like basically vibrating material. So they would take these piezoelectric membranes and they would flap them very quickly, 24,000 times a second. And when you vibrate them like that, you're able to create an air current. Now, the technology, very neat and I did a demo with it, I, I was briefed on it, and I never made a video on it because there was one huge problem. That technology, at least at the time, was very energy inefficient. So just some numbers. A typical laptop fan, something like this, this uses one watt of energy to produce about 1.3 to maybe 1.5 CFM. Obviously it varies based on design and whatever, but around that, right? 1.3 to 1.5 for one watt of energy. The floor, the Airjet used one watt of energy for 0.2 CFM, very little airflow for that type of energy. So if you're using it for laptops, I mean, that was, the, that was the goal, right? That was the dream to be able to use something like that. It just didn't make sense. And when I looked at the numbers, I'm like, there's no way this is ever gonna be picked up by a laptop company anytime soon. And two years later, we still do not have any laptop companies that have touched it because energy efficiency. Also, there's issues with like vibrations and stuff when you're flapping things at that kind of rate. There is one product that uses it. It's a desktop with unlimited power because that plugs right up to the wall. But the whole idea of energy efficiency does not work well with that Airjet product. Okay, now, since that thing was announced, I've been approached by multiple companies saying they have, oh, you know, we got some new solid state cooler. They've all been that type of tech. So I've kind of been jaded to this whole idea of a solid state cooled laptop. And then two weeks ago, I hear about there's this new product being demoed at, show, at CES that uses a different kind of technology. And apparently there was like a laptop being built with it. So I'm like, okay, let me see this. I go to the website and it is in fact an entirely different method of cooling. It's actually solid state, there's no moving parts, and it works through the ionization of air molecules. So they have these harmonica looking things, they call them their ionic cooling engine. And inside each one of these, they have a wire and a grill, and these act as two electrodes. So when you run a high enough voltage through that wire, it ionizes the air around it. So it's stuff that we breathe, like oxygen, nitrogen, those are now ionized, they are missing an electron. And now those ionized molecules are very reactive. They're trying to replace that missing electron. So they're attracted to the negatively charged grill. So you got these ionized air molecules that jump over to that grill. And the act of that jumping creates a little bit of wind, but then you multiply it by billions and trillions of air molecules that are just doing this at the same time. Now you have some real airflow. It's a very crude representation of what's going on here, but that's essentially what it is. You have air molecules that are being ionized and then immediately deionized, and that process creates airflow. It's crazy, but it works. So I'm looking through their press material, it all seems very impressive, and I reach out to them, like, can you show this thing to me? Do you guys have like functional things that I can see? And they come up and they show me a functional laptop. The company that built this, like, the company that built this laptop, like everyone knows this company. It's a very well-known company. You will see it at CES. I wish I could show it to you, but it's not time yet. But the technology behind it was crazy. I was, I was running Prime 95 and looking at hardware info, completely normal clock speeds. It's a powerful chip. And like, there's no sound. There's no moving parts. It's wild. Like, think about it for a second. You're creating wind. You're creating airflow from nothing. It's like a piece of metal and it's like, 
there's wind, there's airflow coming out of it. It's crazy. It's like so freaking crazy. The more I talk about this, I'm like, now I'm like vocalizing my thoughts. I'm like, this is nuts. This is like, in my mind, this is like game changing technology that fundamentally changes what laptops can and I think should be. And in addition to showing me that working laptop, they also demonstrated the airflow using a more elegant device than the one that I showed earlier. Now, keep in mind that using a smoke machine like this is visually exaggerative because smoke particles follow fluid dynamics. Like when you look at that video, it might seem like it's hairdryer airflow. It's not, it's much more modest than that, but it's a lot more airflow than the air jet and much more energy efficient at doing it. So like I said, a regular laptop fan moves around 1.5 CFM per watt. The Airjet from Frore, their product does 0.21 CFM per watt. Ventiva's Ionic Tech does around one CFM per watt. So it's not as energy efficient as a regular laptop fan, but it's essentially silent and it's small. So this is the size of a typical laptop fan. And the larger you go, the quieter you can run it. But the reason why size is so important when it comes to fans and stuff is that these things dictate how you design laptops. Like because these things have to be in there to cool them for most laptops, you have to take that into consideration when you figure out like how big of a battery is it? How big is the whole product? Like the whole thing revolves around thermal design, right? And that's how big they often are. Now the Frore Airjet was quite a bit smaller and because it was so small, I think that's why it was so exciting to a lot of people because it's like, if you can shrink it down to this size, that changes things, but energy efficiency problems. Now the tech from Ventiva is different. They can make them in custom lengths and stuff, but these little metal components are not enough. You need a couple other things. First, you need some kind of housing. Like in this example here, uh, this is actually housing the middle sized one you saw previously. And this was the thing that was inside the machine that I showed you earlier. But this little housing serves two purposes. One, it serves to kind of direct the airflow as it generates it, but also it acts as like a kind of a small Faraday cage because that electrode wire generates an electromagnetic field that you have to contain using a Faraday cage type product like this. Uh, but in addition to the housing, you also need to have a power supply. So in order to operate this thing, you need to be able to generate a high enough voltage, very low current, but a high voltage to be able to uh, create the ionization capabilities of that wire. And this is it here. Now this is an older, I guess, older generation of this thing. They're actively shrinking down more and more and supposedly have several in development that are significantly smaller than this, but each one of these power supplies can operate several of those harmonica looking things. These are all, uh, uh, what they call them, ionic cooling engines. And I think this one in particular can do three, but they have other ones that can do more like five and six, whatever. But the idea is that you need one of these for several of these cooling things that you can place around the laptop. But as you shrink that, the whole thermal solution becomes smaller and smaller. And even in its current state, like this like older generation one I have in front of me right here, this is already smaller than most fans. Now there are three kind of obstacles that I think this product has right now. So the first one is the cost. So a typical laptop fan is so cheap. Like these are a dollar to three dollars or four, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like single digit dollars. So even the most custom solutions out there with like finely tuned fins and stuff, like these are very inexpensive. A new solution like this, like out of the gate with low volume, I wouldn't be surprised if this is like an extra 40 or $50 cost for the manufacturers. Like it's like, it's a lot more than fans. So I feel like when that pricing trickles down to consumers, it's going to be a decent step up. Uh, just this is like based on very little laptop engineering knowledge, but that's just my thinking. Uh, but the other thing is ozone. So when you ionize air, when you, especially with oxygen molecules in our atmosphere, you have the potential to create ozone like O3. Now I spoke to them about this because right when they demoed this, I was like, wait, you're ionizing air. Isn't there right? Isn't there O3? And so they have a solution. They say that they're using manganese dioxide as a catalyst on the, like the copper or like, I guess on the heat sink or the fin area. And it just acts as a catalyst to facilitate the conversion of that ozone back to oxygen immediately. Now they've supposedly done some testing with like UL standards and apparently it's all good up on the up and up. And now that I'm saying this out loud, I do think that in order for that company to have picked this thing up and make a laptop with this, it probably passed all the certification, but it's just a thought that I had. And I also did ask them like dust and all that stuff. And they apparently have solutions for all these things. 
it's just all under patents. I don't, they didn't explain the details of it, but a lot of that is solved. But the third, and I think the biggest obstacle with this, it comes down to static pressure. So static pressure is, I guess it's the, it's the ability for a fan to continue pushing air, even if there's resistance. So a typical laptop fan, these things have like, I'd say like 40 to maybe 50 pascals of static pressure. So that's like the higher, the better, because that means that you can push the air through a lot of uh, heat, like fins. You can suck air through a lot of like tiny holes. This is okay. The Frore Airjet product, one of its main strengths was very high static pressure. I think that was like 1700, way above. So that had the ability to like suck air from really far away, uh, not particularly energy efficiently, but it could do it. This product here, the Ventiva, has a static pressure rating of 12. So significantly lower than like the 40 or 50 of a laptop fan. And because of that, there's one limitation to this, one big limitation to this. So if you'll notice from the demo unit earlier, the air intake holes are really close to the ionic cooling engine itself. And they've done this just to minimize the amount of resistance that the air is gonna get to be able to flow in through that device and out. And the reason why this whole idea of like static pressure is an issue is that when it comes to the typical laptop design right now, like this is uh, an Asus product. So these, this right here, this is air intake and it sucks air in through here and then out the back of the device, the exhaust. But this, these, this like main intake grill area is not the only area that air flows through this system. Like obviously the main intake is here, but even like the device itself, when you pop it open, there are little gaps all across the keyboard and airflow goes to the keyboard. And even up top, there's like a, you know, this is stylistically designed, but there's air that's going through these little grills that get exhausted out the back. But the reason why this device is able to suck air from all those little tiny holes is because the static pressure of those two fans is reasonably high. Now there are even devices out there like laptops where they'll actually seal off the, like the intake here because they want air to flow in a very particular way through like other sources. And that's just the way that laptops are designed. You're, de you're getting that air to flow across multiple components before it gets exhausted. But because the static pressure of this device is so low, you lose that capability. You don't have the ability to like suck air from really far small holes all across the laptop before it goes in through the ionic mechanism. And because of that, I think that if you just build a laptop using this technology with no change to the components and where things are placed, you lose a lot of the efficiency. In order to take real advantage of this, you need to just redesign a laptop completely with components moved into different areas so that you don't need to rely on strong static pressure to be able to just make proper use of this type of cooling technology. And I think that's why a lot of their press material shows coolers on different edges of the laptop. But I look at this tech and I'm just super excited to see what other companies do with this technology. Like I, I think I, I, if I had to bet, I feel like this changes the trajectory of laptops. I really think that this type of tech is, I can feel tangible. It's real, like it already is tangible. I, I, I saw one, but it just feels proper. It doesn't feel like vaporware. Like I'm not saying that Fror was vaporware. I feel like they had good intentions, but just like the technology and the physics behind it was, you hit a wall, like energy can't, you can't beat physics. But here the physics, they already work. So, all right. There you have it. I hope you guys look at this and don't think I'm crazy. Like I'm so excited by this. I hope you guys are as well.